My cousin sued her own sister. My great-grand-aunt died of COVID in the beginning of 2020. It's been a huge blow for the entire family, especially her two daughters. The drama between them came to a head when her will was read out. She left both of her daughters 1.5 acres each of land that she owned out in Louisiana, but she left her house to her oldest daughter. That house is a family staple. It was the house my great-grandaunt lived in when she moved from Louisiana to Washington to be with someone she loved. It was where celebrated Christmas Eve and Thanksgiving, it made sense that the oldest daughter got the house since she was already living there to begin with. Not to mention, the younger daughter already had a house. One where she just renovated the basement and put a brand new deck in the front. She didn't need the house at all. But my cousin didn't see it that way. So she felt the need to sue her older sister for the rights to the house. She even got her daughter and her niece to turn again her own sister. Her reasons for wanting the house are pretty selfish in my opinion. Her main take for wanting the house was so that she could rent it out to other people. Not even a week before my great-grandaunt died, she said to her face that making money off the house was going to be her plan. Everyone in my family was so pissed to the point where they all announced that they weren't coming to her wedding and the ones that were coming would be sitting on the groom's side. Her fiancé was actually a nice guy. You may think that might be a little harsh, but my cousin honestly deserved it. For someone to say that they would claim their mother's house when she dies to her face is nasty. Because of all the backlash she was getting, she ended up dropping the lawsuit and apologizing to her sister. On top of that, the wedding was canceled. I could talk about this for hours because this situation goes in deeper and deeper. I tried to keep it as brief as possible. I just hope my family gets better after all that has happened. Story 2, entitled M.I.L. Threatens Legal Action for Not Seeing Grandchildren One Weekend. Friday night, around 10.30 p.m., my mill texted my hubby, H., informing us she would be at the apartment to get the kids Saturday evening. This was worded as an FYI, not a request. At the time, she was informed that we have plans for Saturday evening, but she could get them Sunday if weather permitted. She argued this, but gave in. Saturday night comes and the roads are not safe. Mixed snow and rain all day with more in the forecast for Sunday. H texted M.I.L. that the kids wouldn't be going anywhere because of the road conditions. She agreed that the roads were bad, and we thought that was the end of it. Sunday, H went to work, and the kids and I went about our normal weekend routine. Then, at noon, Meal showed up on my porch informing me she was taking the kids and had the stuff to cut their hair, which had never been discussed. I reiterate that H had told her the kids were not leaving the house because the roads were not safe. She proceeded to scream at me that she can take the kids whenever she wants to because they are mine, I told her, have a good day, then shut and locked the door. I then texted H to let him know what had gone on and to expect her to contact him. She sat in my parking lot for ten minutes screaming at him and then left. When she left, I called a friend to come over in case she came back before H got home from work. The day was going as normal until at 3 p.m. when someone tried to walk into the apartment without knocking and then began pounding on the door. Mile was back, knowing there was about five hours until H got home. I did not open the door. She started calling and texting H at work telling him to call her, or she would call the cops. He did not. About an hour before he got off, she texted him saying she had called and was waiting for them to arrive. H took a different route home which allowed him to avoid walking past her car, and we went about our normal night, kids' bath and bedtime, since there was school the next day. She finally pulled out of the parking lot at 9.30 p.m., 6.5 hours after arriving. The texts and calls haven't stopped, and today she left H a voicemail threatening legal action if he doesn't call her and let her see the kids. We have removed her from all of the kids' information at their schools, in case she tries to go that route, and are currently looking for a lawyer to make sure nothing happens. Story 3. Cult talkers think they can scare me out of my new home. I should give you guys just a little backstory on how I ended up in this situation. I grew up in Scientology. My parents joined back in 1991 and moved to the States to be involved more than they could from the UK. In 2015, when I was 15, I joined the Sea Org and signed a billion-year contract. I know how insane that is, but it was something my parents were pressuring me to do because they thought it would allow me to be the best Scientologist I could be. But last August... I saw my opportunity to leave and I took it. I was sent out with a group of other Sea Org members to confront some people who had been declared as suppressive people, SPs, who were outside the building. 
when one of them said they had a permit to film some stuff in the street, and since it was public that we couldn't stop them, and that it was in the car parked about five minutes away from where we were. One of the women I had come out with told me to go with the guy and check it out, so I did. When we got round the corner, I told the guy I had wanted to leave but hadn't been able to because there was always someone watching. He suggested that maybe since we were out of sight, maybe we could get into his car and he would drive me to a hotel and get me a room so I could plan where I could go after a couple days. So I took the opportunity and got into his car and finally felt so much freedom that I had never felt before. He had also been a Scientologist and had escaped from Gold Base years ago, so understood my situation very well, and once I figured out that I wanted to go to Washington, he got in contact with some friends of his, who were able to get me there without Scientology having any way of tracing my movements. I have been here ever since. I live in a nice neighborhood, well at least to where I had been before, and had managed to get a job working in a coffee shop. I have been so happy to be free, but I never fully stopped looking over my shoulder. I know the policies regarding people like me, and I have been keeping an eye out for them ever since I left. Two months ago, I noticed that a car with tinted windows was following me. I knew it was down to Scientology. They had somehow found out where I had moved and were trying to gather information on me. Last week, they finally knocked on my door. Even though I knew it was going to happen sooner or later, I was shaking. My neighbor, who has always been really kind to me, was over. She comes over sometimes just to check on me, and she'll bring me food if she feels like I haven't eaten properly. She's basically been like a mom to me, and I love her for it. I opened the door and things got really uncomfortable real fast. ES1, your parents have been worried about you and you're hiding out here. Why? M, I'm not hiding. I just don't want to be in a cult anymore. ES1 shouting, Liar, you are a criminal. You broke your contract and you fled. You are evil. KN interrupting. Hold on a minute, stop shouting. OP is not evil. And she is free to live her life as she pleases. Now leave her property or I will call the police. ES2 holding a camera pointed at my face. You are a suppressive person. You may not set foot in any Scientology billing again. If you do, we will have you charged with harassment. And confused. But you're the ones who tracked me down. I know the policies. I know I'm an SP. I know I'll be being disconnected with my family. So what do either of us gain from you being here? KAN. Put the camera down. ES1, no KN closes the door in their faces and goes to close the curtains as I told her that they would probably try filming through my windows. I went and closed all other curtains in my home, and after KN left, I locked my doors too. They are still watching my house from a car across the street, and I feel uncomfortable about going outside. I know what methods can be used by Scientologists who are fair gaming an SP. I know now after watching Going Clear and Leah Remini's show that my experience with them after leaving is tame, but it's still pretty creepy. Why they feel entitled to follow people around to a point where I'm basically a prisoner in my own home, I don't know. But I wish they would leave me alone. I'm not sure what information they have gathered on me, but I know whatever it is will have been sent back. And it will be used against me in some way. But until they try and use it, I have no way to really do anything. If anyone has any advice, please let me know.